into the All-Star game, and deservedly so, along with Brent Cecil. Take a look at the starting lineups that are brought to you by Quaker State. Real, durable oil. Minnesota won 6 nothing yesterday afternoon on seven hits. Let's take a look at their lineup. Brian Dozier, Joe Maurer, and Ryan Doman back behind the plate. Brian Dozier has a six-game hit streak, including a three-run home run yesterday in the seventh inning. And then down in the order, Trevor Poof is the third baseman. Chris Parmley in his last 13 games is at 325, 13 for 40. He's got some power, three home runs and four RBIs. Parmley with a pair of doubles yesterday. That's the lineup that is set to take on Tyler Redmond, making his second major league start. Second career start, first for the Blue Jays after allowing just one run in three relief appearances for the Jays out of that bullpen. Most recently, July the 3rd versus Detroit. In that game, he threw three scoreless innings, now just one hit. Struck out a couple of batters, and he also hit a batter, so he'll get the start today. This was, again, supposed to be Chin Ming Wong's start. He was sent down, Redmond. Sent in. Here's the first pitch of the ball game. It's upstairs for a ball. We are underway. Mentioned Brian Dozier, the second baseman. He had a three run home run. Picked up another RBI with a ground out and had a single yesterday afternoon. Mark DeRosa gives it a look, but it's well back in the seats out of play. There's the six game hit streak we were talking about with Dozier. He's hit 360 over that streak. He's got a little pop in his balance. Home run yesterday was his eighth of the season. And you mentioned the home run and the four RBIs, how that leadoff spot. Setting it up for the Twins. First time a Twins player's done that since Dernard Spam. Redmond's underneath his pitches, and so far he's been upstairs a bit. Yeah, look at pitch tracks right there. That's all you need to know right now about that arm slot for um, Redmond. A leadoff walk for Dozier. Let's take a look at the defense behind Todd or Redmond. It's Davis Rasmus and Bautista in the active, same as it's been since Melky Cabrera has been on the disabled list. Mark DeRosa makes his 13th start at third base. Reyes and his stores up the middle. Encarnacion is the first in JP and CB behind the plate for Todd Redmond. And we got to talk about the All Stars once again. There's Bautista. He will start in the outfield for the American League team. And Edwin is going as a reserve. But he'll be playing some first base for Jim Leland's squad. Joe Maurer is the starting catcher for the American League. He's at first base today for Minnesota. He's been the DH, the catcher, and the first baseman in this series. You got to protect him a little bit, protect those legs, play him over at first base, and they've been able to rotate different players through that DH spot. <laughs> Snap throw to first, and Dozier is back ahead of the tag. Joe Maurer is a six time All Star. This is the fourth time he's been elected to start the All Star game. Ball on the strike. I mean, you can see that Redman is really trying to figure out his delivery he's underneath everything and with that he's pushing all those pitches up out of the strike zone I think a good way to help him get his hand back on top of that baseball throw a breaking ball his last time out he threw a pretty good breaking ball at the Tigers another fastball another one at the top of the strike zone when you throw a breaking ball your hand has to get on top of the baseball just get you back into your timing. Redmond's last start in his first major league game. He made that start for Cincinnati August 18th last year against the Cubs. There goes Dozier. Aaron Sebia's throw is in the center field. Rasmus backing up the play. Dozier will go to third, and Dozier almost rounded the base. If that throw had been on the bank, DeRosa might have had a 
Might have had a play on a shot out of this throw. Dozier takes off. It's going to be his eighth stolen base, and that ball is way offline into center field. So he'll make it another wide throw over at third base. But again, he tries to throw a breaking ball, and JP throws it into center field. So it'll be a stolen base and an error. Just like that, the Twins are threatening. Eighth steal of the season for Dozier, fourth air on Aaron Seedy. And Maurer fouls it down the left side. More pitching and defense, and a leadoff walk in an air, and the Twins are in business early. Still nobody out. Yep, haven't hit the ball yet. They've got a guy at third and, and a guy at the plate who can cash him in. Shorten up his swing just a little bit. Blue Jays are going to trade and out for a run. Playing the infield back. And Maurer strikes out on a high slider. One down. Time now for the scouting report brought to you by TD Bank, proud sponsor of your Toronto Blue Jays. This is what Todd Redman, the 28 year old, basically features. He's got a fastball slider and a changeup. He'll use the fastball. It's about 90, 92 miles an hour. He's going to have to paint with it, I think. And I think he's going to have to get a slider over, throw it for strikes. That slider, they're hitting 231 against. Ryan Gilman back behind the plate this afternoon. Doman opened up the series on Friday night as the catcher. Two and zero. Oh. Oftentimes, adrenaline will factor in for a starting pitcher in the first inning, and it looks like that's the case with Todd Redmond. He's just pushing everything yep. toward the plate. It's all of his pitches have been upstairs. But there's nothing wrong with his fastball. The way he throws it, it, it's a sneaky fastball. We've seen a lot of swings and misses off of his fastball when he's around the strike zone. It's a little bit sneak, sneaky. There's his numbers in Triple A. Just has to be able to get it down in the strike zone. Redmond was claimed by the Blue Jays in spring training. He was claimed in March and. He had been with the Orioles, but then he started the season seven weeks on the disabled list, and he's just recently returned to the starting rotation in Triple A. The pop up on the infield, Reyes, the shortstop, wandering out to shallow left, makes the catch. Well, that's a big out, two outs now, and Redmond trying to work out of a tough situation. Man on third, nobody out. Bauer, Domit, and Morneau coming up. That was another fastball right there, and I think it took Domit by surprise. Dozier with the leadoff walk. He stole second and went to third on the air. He is still at third base, but now there are two outs for the Canadian, Justin Morneau. Morneau is the DH today. He was 0 for 4 in. Yesterday's game, he's 0 for 8 in the series. Twins scored in just two innings in yesterday afternoon's game. They scored three in the third and three more in the seventh. The only scoring in the ball game. The Blue Jays were shut out six nothing. You're right about the sneaky fastball. It's 92, but even more no there was late. You know you're going to get a fastball. The hitters have been late. Yep. The timing just hasn't been there. I don't want to say it's a short arm. It's almost three quarters, a little bit of a short arm, so it makes it tough for the batters to pick it up. One and two. He popped him up. Asturias backs up behind second and makes the catch with a job by Tyler Redmond. Man at third, nobody up. He gets out of it. And the Canadian Scott Diamond will become back top of the order. Jose Reyes will start things off. Then Jose Bautista and Edwin Encarnacion.
the line up outside to get into Rogers Center because it's J.P. Aaron CBM Bobblehead Day. Give away 20,000 bobbleheads today to the fans that get into the ballpark. It's a full house, packed house. Roof is closed so far as there are rain showers in the area. Let's take a look at the Blue Jays starting lineup. Jose Reyes, then the all-star Jose Bautista. And boy, he has really put on a surge as he closes his first half of the season. And Edwin Encarnacion, he chose going to the All-Star game in his last 35 games. His OPS is 959. Scott Diamond from Guelph, Ontario, take the mound today. 5 and 7, 5 18, earn run average for the Minnesota Twins. This is his second career start in Toronto. He's 1 and 1 with a 150 ERA in those career starts versus the Blue Jays. And don't you know, this is a thrill for him pitching here. Five and seven for the season, and Reyes jumps on that first pitch, hits it right to the center fielder. I'm so sophisticated to get a first of me, you gotta be in this year. Right fielder, to number 19, Jose Bautista. Bautista going to the All Star game. His fourth All Star. Selection. Third time he has been elected to start the All Star game. Blue Jay fans doing a good job of voting Bautista for the All Star team. He edged out Nick Marcakis of the Orioles for the third spot in the outfield. He has put on a big push here at the end of the first half of the season before the All Star break. How about that for his finishing kick here to get in here. That's a fair ball down the left field line all the way into the corner. Bautista is headed for a second. He'll get there with a hard line drive double. Let's take a look at the Minnesota Twins defense. Creek Thomas is in left field. Osvaldo Arcia he got hit by a pitch yesterday. He's not in the lineup. Trevor Proof and Pedro Florimont back on the left side of the infield. Dozier and now are on the right side, and Ryan Bowman is the catcher for Scott Diamond. We were talking about Bautista, the way he has been hitting. He smoked that ball into the, the corner over his last nine games. 424, a couple of doubles, four homers, and eight RBIs. Yeah, he's making a finishing kick into the All Star break. Edwin Encarnacion has all-star numbers, 23 homers and 66 RBIs. Encarnacion's first all-star team. It's a great honor for him, I'm sure, and he mentioned to us that he's going to take his family to New York to enjoy the festivities surrounding the all-star game. There's the other all-star right there. Congratulations to Brett Cecil. All the hard work has paid off. And it's a chance to go to New York for his first all-star game. And he says he's going to bring the family there. Enjoy. 3-0 pitch to Encarnacion right on the corner. Yeah, Brett Cecil, what a story he has been. Last year starting out in double-A starting. And then they moved him to the bullpen, and he has flourished as a reliever. And now he's going to his first All Star game. And Carnacion walks. And Carnacion walks, hits the first base. Let's take a look at the scatter report for Scott Diamond. This is his pitch usage so far this year and the opponent's batting average. I think the fastball is important for him. And he says after his last start against New York, I've got to get it down and strike. He's got a curveball in the changeup. You can see the high numbers right there off of each one of those pitches, the batting average. But in his last start against the Yankees, he said he pitched okay. He felt like he had a little bit better command with that fastball. Diamond is 27 years old. He turned 28 on the 31st of July. As Pat mentioned, he's from Guelph, Ontario, at the Centennial Collegiate Vocational Institute in Guelph. And later on, went to State University of New York at Bingham. Adam Lynn trying to cash in early. 
But Blue Jays in yesterday's game had Mike Pelfrey on the ropes in the first inning and couldn't cash in. They stranded the bases loaded. Pelfrey walked in Carnacion, Lynn, and Rasmus. But Davis grounded out to end the inning. Yeah, all they needed was one hit to get that thing started, and it could have been the difference between a win and a loss. Could have been a totally different outcome of that ball game if they could have cashed in early. Slow breaking ball, and Diamond is ahead one and two. Lynn's been chasing a lot of pitches upstairs, something he didn't do when he had that real hot stretch. Showed great patience during that hot streak. Laying off of borderline pitches and laying off the pitches that were up. That's where they had been throwing him. Ball in the dirt and Gomez gets on it quickly. And Blue Jays just couldn't cash in against Pelfrey, and that was their best and only threat of the afternoon. Yeah. After that, they couldn't get anything going. All singles. And tough to string them together when you only get four of them. Two, two to Lynn. Line drive in there, going to get out of it. Scott Diamond gets a line drive double play to end the inning. And again, the Blue Jays can't take advantage. They strand one. It's a scoreless game after one. Jays on Sportsnet brought to you by the 2013 Honda Civic, Canada's best selling car 15 years in a row. Honda, the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. JP Aaron Sebia bobblehead day and Aaron Sebia behind the plate. The crowd on hand at Rogers Center. Both clubs couldn't cash in in the first, they each stranded a base runner. Third baseman Trevor Poof. Jays have done a good job against Poof in this series. They've given him the collar. 0 for 8 hasn't really hit the ball hard. They have pumped the fastballs right there to him. He just hasn't been able to pick him up. Yeah, he's had a couple of strikeouts. And it's going to be interesting to watch Todd Redman work in the second after he had trouble getting the ball down in the first. Ball is driven to right. Bautista back a couple of steps makes the catch. So we mentioned the All-Star teams have been announced. Are there any surprises on the All-Star team and guys that you were kind of surprised they were named to the All-Star team? That were named to it. So there were a couple of surprises, surprises as starters for me. I thought for sure. Pedroia was going to win at second base, and I thought for sure Johnny Peralta would win at shortstop. They're both on the team, they're just not starting. 
Yeah, when you look at the starters, they're all voted by the fans, and there was a late push for Robinson Cano to, just, to beat Dustin Pedroia. And same for J.J. Hardy. He beat out Johnny Peralta. No Raul Ibanez either. I thought he had a shot at making it in the American League the way that he has come on. 21 home runs. Power back. Yasiel Puig. The rage of the National League did not make the team. And I think that's right. He's only played a little bit more than a month. But isn't he one of those five guys who could still get voted in? I think he's one of those, just like Steve Delabar, one of the voting guys. So we might not have heard the last of Yasiel <laughs> Puig. <laughs> Puig is indeed one of the five. It's Ian Desmond, Freddie Freeman, Adrian Gonzalez, Hunter Pence, and Yasiel Puig. Steve Delabar, make sure you get online and vote for Steve Delabar. He is. 105 American Leaguers on the final vote. Another good pitch and another foul off by Parmley. And the neat thing about that voting for for Delapart, it's unlimited. You can vote as many times as you want, unlike before where you just had 25 votes. You, the, the most you could vote for a player online was 25. Unlimited now. So just keep tapping that send button. Upstairs, it's a full count. Steve Delabar is on the list for the American League final vote with Joaquin Benoit of the Tigers, David Robertson of the Yankees, Tanner Shepherds of the Rangers, and Koji Uehara of the Red Sox. There's a good break while Palmer strikes out. Friends, it's time now for a Blackberry sneak peek stat of the game. Brought to you by the new Blackberry Z10 and Q10, built to keep you moving. Today's sneak peek is all about Jose Bautista and getting in. You can see from that final tally, he just got under 4 million votes just ahead of Nick Marcakis. So, congratulations to Jose. Congratulations to all the fans who voted for him. Well deserving honor for Bautista. It's going to take that type of effort from the fans to get Delabar involved. Of course, you know how many baseball fans there are in Japan, and they have. One candidate to vote for, that's Koji Uehara. So make sure that you make all of Canada proud and log on, get online, and vote for Steve Delavar for the All Star team. Hey, we've got all of Canada, so let's go. You can do that. You've got Robertson from New York also. You have to be aware. Fly ball in the center. Kobe Erasmus has a beat on it. Todd Redman made a good adjustment. He has a quiet second inning. He ties the side in order.
Jays on Sportsnet, brought to you by Home Hardware and Building Center locations. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. And by the 2013 Honda Civic, Canada's best-selling car 15 years in a row. Honda, the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Mark DeRosa jumps on the first pitch he sees and rips it to left. A leadoff single for DeRosa. Looked like the same swing Mautista used on that pitch up in the zone. And another fastball looked like over. Give me over fastball right here. Look where it is. That's belt high. That ball is going to get hit hard by a big leaguer. And DeRosa does just that. You can see Blue Jays off and running. Rajay Davis. Davis just won for his last 17. And hit came in the fourth inning in yesterday's game. Hey. Been pulling off the ball a little bit. And he's been given a steady diet of pitches away. I mean, I watched him today in batting practice. And his whole first round was going the other way. Staying on it just a little bit longer. Shooting the ball the other way. Wouldn't surprise me if we see him. Try and shoot them between first and second now. He was looking out over the plate there and took a strike. Oh, and two. Boy, isn't it funny how quickly hitting comes and goes? Uh, he was red hot there for a while. Everything he swung at was a base hit. Couldn't get him out on the road trip that the Blue Jays just got off of. Couldn't get him out. Now you face a team from a different division like the Minnesota Twins. A little unfamiliarity there. This has popped up into right. This Parmalee over near the foul line makes the catch. It's one down this inning. The rest is still in first. Kobe Rasmus, the left handed hitting center fielder, was stuck in the box. Blue Jays didn't do much at the plate yesterday. Against Belfry and three relievers, they had just four hits, and Meiser Sturz had three of them. Well, pitchers having trouble really getting the ball down in the bottom part of the strike zone early on. Yeah, Diamond, especially. He really yanks his head more so than I remember watching him over the last couple of years. Reminds me a little bit of uh, who was the reliever for the Boston Red Sox, uh, the Japanese Koji Uehara. No, uh, yeah, Okajima. I, Okajima. He yeah. reminds me of Okajima the way yeah. he really never violent. looks at the plate. Yeah, yeah. With, with his head. Max Scherzer a little bit like that as same, well. Same way. Really yanks. It. Rasmus drives on the left. That'll get down in front of Pete Thomas for a base hit. JP and Sevier will step to the plate with two on, and there was a terrific moment before the ball game today. As Jessica Dunn went out to throw out the first pitch, Jessica, the 14 year old, a bone against a survivor, and became friends with JP Aaron Sevier. And she got to throw out the first pitch on J.P. Aaron Sebia bobblehead there. Ladies and gentlemen, just done. As Aaron Sebia went to the Jays way back in spring training and said, I've got this friend. Uh, she's a cancer survivor. I would like her to throw out the first pitch on my bobblehead there. Such a neat story. When he was telling us that around the batting cage today that he found out about it in spring training and asked the Blue Jays, and they said, for sure. Went to the hospital and they've struck up a relationship. And I say, on this day, he's going to do something special on his bobblehead day. I don't know what it's going to be, but I think it's going to be something special. He drives this ball to right. There's something special high and deep, and hardly runs it down. JP and Sebia. It's a long drive to right field. Parmalee ran it down on the warning track. Yeah. Now there are two outs. If the roof is open, <laughs> it's three nothing. Blue Jays right there. Nice play by Parmalee in right field. He did not give up on that ball. He just kept 
chasing it and kept going further and further and stayed right with it. And with that swing by Aaron Sebia, it's going to bring the pitching coach out. Anderson's out for a quick visit. Fans, if you want your baseball questions answered by a team of experts, email asktheexperts at sportsnet.ca and keep your eye out for the home hardware as the experts segment later on. Yeah, it's rare that you see a pitching coach go to the mound after a long fly ball to right. But I think he identified what you saw, the fact that Diamond is flirting with danger upstairs. Last start for Diamond. He pitched against the New York Yankees. And he pitched fairly well. Pitched into the seventh inning. Gave up two earned runs against the Yankees. Retired 11 of the last 13 batters he faced. And after that, he said, I think I discovered something. And I've got to use my fastball. And I've got to use it in the lower parts of the strike zone. But so far this afternoon, he hasn't been able to command it. Whatever was said during that mound visit is working. He is ahead of Meister Asturias, so would two. Throw a fastball down and then got Asturias to go after the no breaking ball. Ujays left a base runner in the first. They've got two on here in the second. Strand two more. Can't come up with a big hit just yet against Scott Diamond. Hall of Fame and for being selected as the 2013 Ford C. Frick Award recipient. Fans are encouraged to send their favorite Tom Cheek memory or moment to bluejays.com slash Tom Cheek. Those memories, moments, stories, and wishes will be passed on to the Tom Cheek family early in August. So make sure you log on to bluejays.com slash Tom Cheek to tell your stories about your memories of the late Tom Cheek. Aaron Hicks, the Switch hitting center fielder. That's left handed against Todd Redden. Redden has retired. Six straight. He walked the first batter of the ball game, and Brian Dozier would get all the way to third base, but Redmond settled down nicely. Yeah, with nobody out, he got the third base, and now he's starting to get that breaking ball over, starting to feel it, starting to get that fastball. The adrenaline has worn off a bit. He was pushing the ball toward home plate in the first inning. He really had to grind to strand that run. That's a sharply hit ball, but right to his students. Aaron Hicks is retired, and yesterday he did the retiring in center. He did some great work out in center field. Some love work. 
Over your ass with sends what looks like it's going to be extra bases. And Hicks robs him of that one. Josh Toley thinks he's got himself a base hit. Here comes Hicks to take that one away. And then Jose deep to center in the ninth. And he hauls it in. Just 23 years old in his first big league season. Yeah, he looks good. Really made some nice plays out of the field. Andrew Florimon. Back in the lineup. He had the day off yesterday. He's a switch hitter as well. Ball on a strike. We saw him play the other day against R.A. Dickey, hitting right handed against him. Now up there left handed. Fly ball into center. Rasmus. Makes a catch. Redmond is in a groove. Yesterday in the seventh with two of Lord, the second baseman Brian Dozier caught up with a fastball from Dickey. And sent it into the seats. That was the big hit right there. That Minnesota got in yesterday's ball game and the Blue Jays failed to get. Doubled the score from three to six. And sent himself a very nice series also. This is my first look at him as an everyday player. He's made some nice plays in the field. He has swung the bat. He's got a couple of stolen bases. He's had four hits in the series. Pops this one up into shallow center. Reyes back as Stewart's the second baseman. Tyler Redmond has retired nine in a row after a leadoff walk. The Canadian Forces today. They salute Warren Officer Monique Rotua. She started with the Canadian Armed Forces as an air traffic control assistant, and she is currently on staff at the Canadian Forces School of Aerospace Control. Congratulations, Warren Officer Rotua. Blue Jays always saluting the Canadian Forces on day games at home. The tradition that the Jays have started. Scoreless ball game. We move to the bottom of the third. Blue Jays have three hits against Diamond. Back to the top of the order. Jose Reyes lined out to Aaron Hicks in center field his first time. Balls and a strike to Jose Reyes. Jose Bautista on deck. Reyes and Bautista. 
big game Friday. There's a fly ball in the center. It looked like Hicks slipped. He lost his footing there, and Cleek Thomas made the catch. Now it's time for the baseball bio brought to you by Transitions Optical. Transition lens is automatically filtered just the right amount of light to enhance everything you see. Today's baseball bio centers on Scott Dime, 26 from Guelph, Ontario. He was an undrafted free agent, which is very interesting that he signed with the Braves organization. And by the spring of 2009, he was rated as the 26th best prospect in the Braves organization. Twins picked him up as a Rule 5 player over the winter of 2011. And he has done a, a very good job for him. We mentioned that he went to school in Guelph and then he went to play baseball in Binghamton, New York. State University of New York and wasn't drafted as Pat mentioned. Spent three years in the minors with the Braves and had a winning record. He's 34 19 with the Braves. Bautista is called that outside fastball that's two and two. Besides playing baseball in college, you know why he went to school there? Engineering. I wanted to go for the engineering. Well, he should be able to understand his own mechanics. <laughs> That's a great point. If he understands engineering, he understands what the problem is right now. Just get the ball down. Full count to Bautista. Bouncing ball. Big hop for Floyd. Bautista's retired. Two down. So Edwin in Panacion will come to play with nobody on. He walked his first time up. Diamond pitched himself into a bit of a jam. Bautista had doubled and then Connorcion walked, but Lind hit into a line drive double play that ended the first. It's so important when you've got that starter on the ropes in the first inning. Minnesota had it to Todd Redden and Blue Jays had it this afternoon against Scott Diamond. And then all of a sudden they start settling in. Say pop up Dozier going out from second. Harmony calls him off and makes the catch. Quick inning for Scott Diamond. Blue Jays go down in order. We'll go to the fourth. Kind of a scoreless ball game. We are pleased to be joined by the host of Baseball Central, Sam Pasentino. Oh, pal, Sam, good to have you in the booth. Yeah, nice to be back. Uh, I like what you've done to the place here. The booth looks great. <laughs> yeah, we dressed it up a little bit. Well, your hockey duties are over now, so talk about your baseball. You're going back uh, on the radio, on the TV show with Dirk Hayhurst. 
in the uh, baseball set for sure. Yeah, I think you tried to light it up uh, a little last week to welcome <laughs> you back. So <laughs> it should be fun getting back in the seat. And, you know, about a month off after the MasterCard Memorial Cup and getting back to host the show and being around the ballpark and the team a little bit. Uh, it's exciting for me. So looking forward to getting back to work for sure. There's a fly ball to the left. Well, I know you keep your eye on the Blue Jays. What's your take of this ball club as we get near the All-Star break? Yeah, it's interesting. I think we're seeing some things today that we've seen throughout the course of the season. Chances to get some runs early, the inability to do so. And it seems like every little mistake always comes back to haunt the Blue Jays. I don't know if it's just a run of bad luck, whether it's base running or missing the cutoff guy. All of these things have combined to kind of put the Blue Jays in the spot they're in right now, I think. Where do they go? Are, are they yeah. buyers or sellers at the trade deadline? I think sellers, and I'd probably look to the Dodgers because they seem to want everybody. That's probably the yeah. place I'd go. It's a good start. Yeah. Uh, I, I think you have to keep the core group of the guys together and then maybe move some pieces. But, you know, a, a couple of things come to mind. The depth and starting pitching and, and the bench depth, too, I think, are, are some things they have to look after. Dante Davis goes all the way to the wall to haul that drive off the bat of Ryan Dominic. Your K host and Sam Cosentino, you guys have a healthy debate from time to time. <laughs> yeah, I like to mix it up a little bit. You know, Dirk's very opinionated. He's really come out of his shell here more in his, in his second year feeling uh, comfortable, and that's what he's paid to do. And I'm uh, paid to try and draw it out of him. So maybe some of the stuff you saw last week, not quite to the same extent, but there's no doubt the healthy debates are a good thing. They're a good thing for the radio show, I think, and they're a good thing for baseball in general. I didn't know that Dirk was opinionated. <laughs> what, what, what gave you that idea? No, yeah. I've watched your show. I mean, you guys go after each other in that show. I love it. He tends to be more of a new school guy. You know, it's the, the scouts versus stats type of thing. And me growing up around here since 1987, I was always more of the of the old school scout type of guy. Old school baseball, sit around after the game, have a beer, talk about what went wrong in the game. That, that seemingly has left the game. Uh, a lot. I, I tend to think of myself as being more old school and Dirk new school, and that's probably where the debate starts. Yeah, and baseball, of course, is perfect for that because you can debate any side you want to take, and there's no wrong or right to any of it. I think it's great for debate. I think you guys have probably had a lot of fun getting caught up with some old buddies who come back to broadcasting for other teams, and I'm sure that debate exists with you guys, too, when you go out after the game or you're having dinner or even sitting in the cafeteria before the game. Everything but the numbers. We can't we can't argue the numbers. You we, know, we, we argue with what we see. No, you're right about that. But I don't know. The Jose Bautista hitting second is, is one big thing for me. You know, everyone talks about it's the numbers. The numbers say he should be hitting second. But what you don't take into consideration sometimes, what does the player think? How does he feel in that position? Yes, the numbers bear it out. But over the long haul, if Jose feels more comfortable in the three hole, I think that's something you, you have to consider. But then again, the numbers say that that's not necessarily you know the case. what i have no problem with jose bautista hitting second in the lineup as long as eight and nine get on base in front of them they have to get on base because he comes up with nobody on base and, and that's the thing you want that guy driving in runs that's what he's paid to do. Well, i think one thing that, that changes of course is that bautista to me is a number three hitter he's an impact hitter he's a guy that you want hitting third in your lineup and i know it's worked well for the blue jays and jose Certainly hasn't said anything publicly about whether or not he's comfortable there. But at the same time, you look at everybody's lineup. And your best hitter is hitting three. And he always is the guy that can knock about out of the ball. And isn't that funny, Buck? Because you two guys are old school guys. And that has always been the case in baseball. When you guys played and when you grew up coaching Tabby, you did, that was the thing. Your best guy was always your three guy. Well, the numbers, the numbers people say, well, maybe that guy should be the two guy. That's where the debate to me, and that's the kind of stuff that Dirk and I are, are going to be getting. If he's your play. best player, I just want him coming up as many times with guys on base. Because the bottom line is you still have to score runs that's and right. you still have to win, and Jose Bautista is going to have to drive him in. Well, and I think, too, pitchers react differently when they see Jose Bautista with a couple of guys on base. Uh, much, much different. I couldn't agree more. About Sam Casentino is with us in the booth. He is the host of Baseball Central. Good days at noon. And we'll make sure you check them out. He and Dirk Hayhurst will have this type of baseball conversation every weekend. There's a little looper into center. Bobby Rasmus comes in. Redmond is out of the inning. Sammy, thanks a lot. Good luck, and we'll be listening to you. Have a great time. Thanks so much, have guys. Fun. Appreciate have it. Have those lively debates with Dirk. <laughs> we will. <laughs>
the number one source for baseball. Live baseball. Listen to the radio. Follow games pitch by pitch and enjoy in-game video highlights. The app is available on the iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch, Android, and BlackBerry user ten. Visit at bat thirteen. At bat thirteen is the official app for Major League Baseball. Visit BlueJays.com to order your app. At bat thirteen. Great way to keep up on all the baseball all around both leagues. Cleanup hitter is Adam Lynn. Lynn DeRosa and Davis to face Scott Diamond. Scoreless ball game. Only three hits in the ball game. Blue Jays have all three hits. Adam Lynn doing a much better job this year versus the lefties. He is actually hitting for a higher average versus left handers this year than right hand. Granted, he has more at bats against the right hand, but his average 333 this year against left handed pitching. I think Diamond might help Lynn get going a little bit, staying on the ball, trying to hit the ball the other way. Pops this one up. Towering pop up. John Howard comes down. From first base and makes the catch in fair territory. Lind was standing at home plate when that ball was caught. Good thing Mauer didn't drop it. One out, Mark DeRosa. DeRosa had a single his first time up. Hit the first pitch he saw a high fastball. He lined it to left field. Yeah, so let's see what Diamond does right here. Challenges him with a fastball again. Hey. Had a pretty good pitch with a fastball. Ball on the strike. Diamond came up with the twins in 2011. He went one and five for his. Seven starts. ERA over five. Last year had a breakthrough season. He was 12 and nine with a very good ERA. 354 earned run average. He made 27 starts for the Twins. Chases that breaking ball down and in and strikes out. It's the first strikeout of the afternoon for Scott Diamond. Like the curveball right here. Gets on top of that one and really drives it down. He has had trouble with batters hitting his fastball, so he changes up on him and throws the breaking ball. First strikeout of the afternoon. Jay Davis takes one downstairs. Scott Diamond has retired seven straight. <laughs> Jay Davis breaks that up. He's got a chance for two. Aaron Hicks has a strong arm, but it's late. Davis, his seventh double of the season, comes with two outs here in the fourth. Well, that's a byproduct of a good approach right there. He was getting a little bit ahead of himself, Ronjay Davis, so slow things down, and he does. You're still plenty quick, even to pull that ball. And as soon as he hit it, he was thinking, I got to get myself in the scoring position. And he came out of that box thinking two all the way. When he cut the corner right here, he found another beer and made it easier to save the pace. Boy, he has a pretty stride when he goes for extra bases. Got that corner very well. So Corby Erasmus had a single to left field his first time up. They'd love to pick up Rajay Davis here. It's a scoreless ball game. Everything into the outfield is going to score. And you can see Florimon, the shortstop for the Minnesota Twins. He's got that scouting report that Rajay likes to steal third. He's going to try and keep him close to that bag. Now 
glove off the catcher's glove. It's a ball and a strike. You wonder if Royvon is a little too concerned with Davis with two outs, given where Rasmus hit the ball his first time up the left field. That's a great point because that left side of the infield is huge. The hole. There's Florimon. There's the third baseman, Blue. Yeah, I don't think that extra 90 feet is that big a deal in this situation. If I were Scott Diamond, I would prefer to have a shortstop defend against the hitter than worry about the base steal. They put the pickoff play on, and Davis is back easily, and Diamond didn't even chance to throw. Yeah, he's thinking about, okay, how am I going to get Colby Rasmus out? That's the most important guy standing in the batter's box. Going to pitch him inside, it doesn't become that much of an issue. But with the three and one count, they got to believe they're going to throw something away here. And hitters will take shots the other way. The good ones who have good back control and understand situations, you see a hole like that, why not take a shot? It'll get you an RBI. That's why he's comfortable with the defense set up there. He's going to bust Rasmus inside a couple of pitches. So it's a full count now, two outs. Rajay Davis at second with the two out double. Blue Jays have four hits. The Twins don't have a hit yet. Aaron CB is on net. Side of first. You mentioned Rasmus single to left his first at bat a pitch away and he just took it the other way and now Diamond has obviously changed his approach. Not afraid to throw that breaking ball three and two to Rasmus and Colby just fouled it off. He can still think away now. Stays inside, trying to finish off the at bat inside, and now Ryan Doman going to go out and have a chat with Diamond. Say Davis has been to second base a while now throughout this entire advance, so maybe they fixed up the signs a bit. Maybe they'll go with no sign. That appears to be the case. A little verbal sign. Started that at bat right there with the second most RBIs as an American League center fielder, 43 RBIs. So he has hit well with runners in scoring position, and his 16th home run is going to cash a couple of more. No sign, no problem. Breaking ball. See ya. Golf's it right out of here. Rajay Davis with the. Two out double and then Rasmus right behind him. Home run number 16. RBIs 44 and 45. And look at this guy. Is he happy? He's got the baseball. He got his glove and got a ball way out in the outfield. I don't know who's happier to get or dad. <laughs> don't lose the ball. <laughs> Well, that's awesome to come to a ball game and then kid dreams of catching a yeah. foul ball or a home run and 
Kobe Rasmus made that kid a happy fan. That's why you bring the glove, right? Catch those home run balls, get here early enough, you can do it in batting practice. This has popped up down the foul line, right side now with a long run. And just couldn't get to it. Another happy fan. This is interesting conversation. A couple left-handed hitters. Rasmus is two for two against Diamond. Lynn is 0 for two. He is lined in their double play and popped up. And all that conversation is, hey, what did he throw to you? What did you see? Did you see a breaking ball? Did he tip anything off to you that you thought maybe he was going to throw you that 3-2 breaking ball? Pick up bits of information from your teammates just by sitting next to them and discussing your back. Cued off the end of the bat. And see me with a 2 2 count. Mark Durosa. He is a character. He's a good team guy, good teammate, and a big part of this ball club, even though he doesn't play every day. There's a drive to left. Is it fair? No. He looked like a prophet there for a moment, Mr. Chaplin. What time was it that I told you that? <laughs> About 11 o'clock. And Celia hooks it just a bit too much. It's JP and Celia bobblehead day, and his young friend, 14 year old Jessica Dent, threw out the first pitch. Jessica is a cancer survivor that. Has been befriended by JP Aaron Sevia. He met her through a visit at Sick Kids Hospital last September. Full count. He had a good at bat last time. A couple of runners on sent Parmalee to the wall in right center field. That time just missed a home run down the left field line. What a good at bat. And he walks. Off speed pitch missed down and away and CBM that was the second walk issued by Diamond this afternoon. Trouble with two outs. Rajay Davis got it started with a line drive hustle double to center. And then Rasmus with the home run and that's Jessica Dunn who got the chance to throw out the first pitch. Great experience and she threw it. To her pal JP Aaron Senior. Got a good arm, too. Yes, you do, Jessica, and you are on TV for <laughs> sure. She's the granddaughter of an old friend, Doug Kelcher, Doug and Peggy Kelcher were in the dugout with Paul Beeson before the game and watched Jessica throw out the first pitch. And Doug was a long time part of our TV broadcast for years. There's a ground ball off the bat of his first floor and on goes to first. The inning is over. But Blue Jays break through on Colby Erasmus to run a home run. They lead it 2 nothing. Now time for Blue Jays Central Update. Here's Jamie Campbell that breaks on in the Blackberry Broadcast Studio.
Bob's liable to show up anywhere. Again, Matt Ryan. Nice tour with the bobbleheads today, and he was just bobbing around outside Rogers Center having a good old time. Does that come with a snorkel <laughs> <laughs> in the water? <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's awesome. And it's a beautiful bobblehead. It's got great details of Aaron Sebia with his mask pushed back on top of his head. Bobblehead day. Blue Jays lead it two to nothing. Chris Parkley makes the first pitch strike. Pat Redman has allowed just two walks. That's it. In the entire Twins attack so far today. Third to find that breaking ball. You're wondering how far he can go. He threw three innings in his last outing for the Blue Jays. Made some starts for Buffalo. So they can stretch him out a little bit more. He's an extreme fly ball pitcher. And the Twins just haven't been able to catch up to his fastball. And Simeon wanted that fastball upstairs. Two balls and two strikes. Redman is the 13th pitcher to start for the Blue Jays already this season. And that was thought to have been addressed last year. Blue Jays used 12 starters last year. They added depth to their starting rotation. And then injuries and poor performance have whittled down the numbers dramatically. And now Redmond is the 13th pitcher to start for the Chase this season. And he strikes out finally upstairs his third strike out of the afternoon. The 2013 Honda Civic, Canada's best-selling car 15 years in a row. Honda, the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Roof is closed at Rogers Center. And Redmond. And there's Cleek Thomas, a pitch upstairs. Hey. The breaking ball. He's able to get that breaking ball into the strike zone a little more effectively than he has been with the fastball, but still, he's done a great job running that fastball upstairs. But he just hasn't had that real downward movement on that running fastball. He's more across the plane of the back. No, we'll watch it as this day unfolds right here. 242 pitches his last time out. He is sitting at 67. That's 68. We'll watch as this day unfolds to see if that ball starts inching back up in the strike zone. That's not from being a little excited. I think it's getting a little tired. The arm starts dropping a little bit. But you were on the money about the scouting report. Now Redmond is tough to pick up. That ball is up right where hitters should be able to square it up, and they haven't. Yeah, it's 91 or 92. And they've just been able to hit fly balls with it. The appeal is denied, and Thomas will go to first. Let's see. Third walk for the Twins this afternoon. Managers and pitching coaches watch for little signs in the game of their starter. Are they getting tired? Or are they overcompensating? When they do, what is the ball doing? They'll talk to the catchers in between inning. How's his stuff look to you? And they'll form a game plan that'll help them to decide what to do with the bullpen. We'll watch and see if he can continue to get that ball down. Looks like a pretty good pitch, and JP might have pushed it out of the strike zone a bit, and it didn't get the call. Bedman has walked three batters this afternoon. Thomas takes his walk with one out in the fifth. Team is going to go to the mound as that breaking ball was way outside. 
I think you're right. It might be the point. Redman made five starts in Buffalo, but we had mentioned he was on the DL for the first seven weeks of the season. It's a hot, sticky, humid day inside today. Players are. It's the pitchers and the catchers. Their jerseys are soaked. You can see it. It's a way of draining you when you're out there. Yeah, it's really humid inside Rogers Center, and you can see Redmond trying to find a dry spot on his uniform to wipe the perspiration. There isn't any <laughs> for both of them. Same thing with Scott Diamond. You just have to battle through that. Redmond's longest outing in Buffalo was six innings. He pitched six innings twice. There goes the Thomas. The ball is drilled to right field. Bautista's watching it sail over the wall. Home run for Aaron Hicks. Aaron Hicks has tied it up with one swing of the bat. That's the first hit for the Twins. It comes with one out in the fifth. Number seven for Aaron Hicks. He has been flashing some tools here. We've seen the glove, we've seen the arm. Now we see back. Turns on that pitch, bangs it off that back wall. He's going. He's going to be a good player. Aaron Hicks got some tools. Now the Twins have a lot of confidence in his skills because they traded their two previous center fielders away. Ben Revere and Denard Span both were moved to free up. Center field for Aaron Hicks. Here's the pitch. You can see he's behind that one. He just can't drive it down. It just stays right on that plane about belt high. Blue Jays scored two runs in the bottom of the inning, and the Twins come right back with two of their own. Shortstop Pedro Floribon. He fly out to center field his first time up. 2 2 ball game. Florimon was originally with the Orioles, signed by Baltimore in 2004. He was claimed off the waiver wire by Minnesota in December of 2011. Rule five and waiver wires. Well, you can clean up if you got good scouts, and the Twins have always had a great scouting staff. A little looping pop of DeRosa chasing it down and runs it down with foul territory. There was another team that used to take advantage of that rule five and scouting Blue Jays. Back in the day, they always found good players. If a team you're only allowed to protect 40. Some organizations have more than that. And if you're good, if you know those players, you can steal a couple of them. Two outs. Brian Dozier, greatest Rule 5 claim of all time? Of all time. For the Blue Jays or of all time? All time. Uh, Roger Maris. <laughs> Roberto Clemente. Yeah, Rod, Roberto Clemente. Yeah. There you go. And he was claimed by the Pirates from the Dodgers. You're right. 1955, yeah. something like that. Rule 5 has been around a long time, and some great players have seen their careers take off after being claimed in the Rule 5. Game. Yeah, good example. Way to pull that one out. Beautiful. Blue Jays in 1985 when they won their first division title had two Rule 5 players on the roster. Lou Thornton and Manny Lee. One and two just off the plate outside. Was George Bell a Rule 5? George guy? Bell was a Rule 5. And Kelly Gruber was a Rule 5 player. Yeah, there's been some good pickups. Matt Gillick was terrific oh. with Rule 5 then. Dozier strikes out, but the Twins have tied it. A two run home run by Aaron Hicks. When we come back, bottom of the fifth, it'll be top of the order for it. The Blue Jays, Jose Reyes, Jose Bautista, the All Star, and Edwin Encarnacion. He'll join him in New York as well.
Delamar. Vote for Delamar. You can put Steve Delamar into the All-Star game to join his three teammates. And make sure you log on to BlueJays.com and vote. And you can vote as often and as many times as you would like. And you can bet there's going to be some stiff competition for Steve Delamar. There are five players on the final vote in the American League. So log on to BlueJays.com and vote for Steve Delamar. Send him to the All-Star game along with Bautista, Encarnacion, and Brett Cecil. He has not given up more than two run runs in any of his 35 appearances. That's how good he's been this year. We have asked John Gibbons how he feels about having three All-Stars on the team. Gibbons will be a coach for Jim Leland in New York. 1-1 one, one pitch to miss outside. And Gibbons' response was, well, I don't know how I feel about it. He said, they look at the All-Star team and see three Blue Jays, maybe four on the team, and we're in last place. What's that say about the manager? <laughs> <laughs> he always has an answer, doesn't he? That's awesome. There's a deep drive to left field. Jose Reyes. Goodbye, <laughs> from the right side since he's come off the disabled list. This is third home run, all of them right-handed. He's got some pop. If you make a mistake, Reyes is going to turn on him. Excite the fans here. Diamond's had problems giving up home runs this year. That's his 14th home run given up. Well, that was a no-downer, and Stake to another lead. Chad Matola, who he admires Reyes and his abilities. Bautista tops it to third. Throws it up. One more look at it right here. He says he wants to use his hands. He's got a unique way to get loose in the batting cage. He has Matola stand about 10 or 12 feet and throw it as hard as he can underhand. Just to get his hands moving, and they move right through the strike zone there. Tola suggests that he's never seen a hitter able to handle that hard underhand toss as well as Reyes. And he's got great hands. And he can't get the ball by him, too. Again, he stands about 10 or 12 feet. And you heard of soft toss, where he just underhand it. Well, he underhanded as hard as he can and as fast as he can, and it's just to get. Jose to use his hands a little bit more. This one looked like it went right off the foot of Encarnacion. So he's got to walk that one off. Todd Redman gave up a two run home run to tie the game. And Reyes gives him the lead right back. Reyes, we asked him about when he became a good hitter. He said, when I made up my mind, I wasn't going to strike out anymore. How about that? That was just a couple of years ago. He said, between 2009 and 2010 seasons, he said to himself, I'm not striking out anymore. I need to get on base. I got speed. He said, I always used to strike out 80, 85 times, and I've cut that in half. Of course, he's a batting champ. And he believes that, obviously, the more he put the ball in play, the better off you're going to be. Edwin takes the walk. It comes with one out. It's the third walk that Diamond has issued this afternoon. Second one to Encarnacion. Now Adam Lynn just has to get a good pitch to hit right here. He waited out Diamond his first time up and hit one right on the nose, right at the second baseman for a line drive double play. He got a little bit anxious his last time up. High fastball once again, and he popped it up to the third baseman. Bring him back down. If you're patient enough, that pitcher will bring one into the strike zone for you. Lynn 
has some inside information as to how you hit Scott Diamond after Kobe Rasmus picked up his second hit in the fourth. It was a two run home run. Rasmus and Mann were chatting it up on the bench. And a sinking liner that's going to stay up for Hicks and Linda's retired. Scott Diamond came in this ball game with a five and seven record, but you can see the ERA has been a steady climb for him, and that's probably the league getting to know him a little bit better. Catching up to him just a little bit. First half of 2012, excellent, 2.6. Second half of last year, almost double up to 4.3. This year so far, to the tip over five, and I'm not sure that is. More scouting reports, there's more video and tape on them now. And the hitters, they go, they talk, they go around the league and they talk about, hey, did you face Diamond? Yeah, what does he throw you? And they start talking to each other. So you have to make the adjustments and make better pitches. DeRosa has his second hit of the afternoon in Carnacion. Headed toward third, the ball is cut off. He slides in safely. Likes to swing early in the count. And he doesn't have to yank the ball to get a base hit. This isn't a bad pitch right here from Scott Dye. Looked like a cutter down and away. That's just good hitting from DeRosa. Slices the ball into right field and in front of him, an excellent base runner. He's going to go first to third. Ball cut off and makes it easily. And now he's chatting up again once more with Joe Mauer over there at first base. Well, Mauer, of course, is a pretty good authority on hitting. He's a three time batting champ, but DeRose is two for three this afternoon. Whereas, you know, Joe, I'm starting to really swing the bat just like you. They have carried on a nice conversation for the second time. That DeRosa's been at first base. Scott Diamond in a bit of a jam. Rajay Davis doubled and scored ahead of the Rasmus home run. Continuing to try to coax Davis into chasing that outside pitch. He'll get it in there for you. This is where the Blue Jays on this homestand have missed the clutch hit. There's one hit and deep and gone. And this time. Seven games on this homestand. The Blue Jays have left a lot of runners on base. They've been missing the two-out big hit. This afternoon, it comes from Andrzej Davis. He had a good at-bat his last time up, smoked the double in the left center field, and really waited for Diamond to get the ball in there. Watch hardly any movement at the plate. He's not going to overcommit. Just get the hand started right there. Pull it, and that's a big hit for the Blue Jays. A big three run homer. For Davis, his second home run of the season, and it was a no doubter into the second back, and boy, the Blue Jays needed that. It's good approach. That's where it starts with that good approach. You'll pull the ball. If he throws it in there, you just naturally pull your hands through, which Rajay did. Davis with a pair of hits, a double and a home run. Colby Erasmus has two hits, including a home run. Good cut at that pitch on the outside corner. Mark DeRosa has a pair of hits. And Todd Redmond likes what he's seen. Probably finished because we saw Aaron Luke warming up and with his run scored, he'd be in line for the win. Rasmus was looking for something inside, you think? <laughs> what gave that away? <laughs> oh boy. 
And there it is. Anytime that manager and pitching coach head down there. You know your afternoon is over. Good news is again, these four runs, he's in line for the W. He would be his first big league win. <laughs> Kobe Rasmus hit a long foul ball way up in that fifth bank. Not only was it far, it was foul. Brian Knight down at third base. And then Rasmus checked his swing and he'll take the walk. Rough inning for Todd Redman, and that's it. Now the Twins manager has called for the bullpen, so the walk has done it. Three home runs allowed by Redman, a disappointing return to Ontario for the Guelph native. Thank you, Jamie. Carlos Santana and Chisinau have homered for the Indians, and guess who homered for the Tigers? Miguel Cabrera, number 28. He now has 89 RBIs, and he celebrated his first election to an All-Star team to start with a home run. Anthony Swarzak now into the ball game for the Minnesota Twins. He has had 28 big league starts in his career. He's been moved into the bullpen. Got a late sinking fastball, good curveball, tough slider. A little bit of a changeup. That is his background as a starter. JP and Sebia. First batter for Sorzak. Good Jays have pounded out three home runs this afternoon. A solo home run by Reyes, a two-run home run by Rasmus, and a three-run home run by Davis. And a grand slam to hit for the cycle. <laughs> Get the guys on. Aaron Seedy with a two low count is ball three. Well, one thing Minnesota Twins have always done, they've always thrown strikes. I mean, for years and years and years, they've been able to throw the ball where they need to. This series, they've been walking a lot, a lot of guys, a lot of batters. Four from Diamond this afternoon. Of course, Pelfrey had three all coming in the first inning in his start yesterday. Korea the same way he threw six innings and had three walks.
full count. Joe Maurer is moving behind Colby Rasmus at first base. Rasmus will be running on the pitch. Full count, two outs. That throws Rasmus and Aaron Sebia fouls it back. Colby's had a good day. Single, homer, and now he's walked. He's been on base three times. There goes Rasmus again, and Sebia lines it into center. Rasmus stopped, and then he heads to the third base, and Sebia will stay put at first. Rasmus was looking right at Aaron Hicks and maybe saw him lay back a bit and turned it on going around the back, but he had stopped almost totally at second base. Looked like he might have been decoying the young center fielder going out there. You see him lay back on that. Center fielder will glance up and see what the runner's doing. If he sees him just taking it into second base easily, just like this, okay, he's not going anywhere. They'll lay back on the baseball. Rasmus saw it, was able to pick up 90 feet. Aaron Sebian, his first hit of the afternoon. This is popped up. Shortstop for him on out. Pete Thomas comes in, the left fielder makes the catch, and the inning is over. But the Blue Jays score four, not Skype Diamond out of the ball game. Now it's time. Here comes the Home Hardware Cleanup Crew, brought to you by Natura. Home Hardware's exclusive line of safe. Environmentally friendly cleaning products. For his first major league win was the starter. He goes five innings, allowed just one hit. It's a two run home run by Aaron Hicks. Walk three, struck out four through 84 pitches. Just what John Gibbons was hoping for. Hit his starter through five innings. He did it in 84 pitches. Just gave up that one mistake, the home run to Hicks. Get five innings from your starter, turn it over to your Super Bowl pen, and then that's what he's going to do here in the sixth inning, starting with Aaron Loop into the game for the 37th time. This season, look at those numbers from the left side. 188 earned run average, lefty city, 214. This is where John Gibbons can use the depth of his bullpen and get the matchups that he wants. Luke hasn't pitched since Thursday. Uh, he is fresh and well rested. He misses with the first pitch to Joe Mauer. Mauer's 0 for 2 with the strikeout. When you have four left handers in your bullpen to go along with four right handers, and you get into this part of the ball game, 
This is where you say, okay, they got Maurer and Morneau this inning and Dome it in between. Let me bring one of my lefties in. Then you get, oh, there's a couple more lefties. I'll bring somebody else in. I mean, it just sets up for John Gibbons to have that much depth in your bullpen. And all of his lefties can get right handers out, so that's a real advantage. They don't have to play matchup. And the sergeant of the bullpen is Pat Henton. And he does a terrific job of getting his pitchers ready to come into games. Keeps them updated on who they're going to face and how to get them out. Boy, he really does a good job down that pen. And he doesn't do it the inning they're going to get up. He might start thinking, okay, hey, you got these guys coming up next inning. Think about getting them out. That's probably going to be you. One out. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. Big crowd on hand with the roof closed here. This afternoon, Blue Jays will have an off day tomorrow before they go on the road. Cleveland and Baltimore to wrap up what has become known as the first half. We are well beyond the halfway point of the season, but the All Star break coming up. And Doman's a catcher. Well, you can see Doman, his jersey is so yep. clear through. In a muggy afternoon. The pants are a different color than the shirt. You know it's hot and humid then. Drive this ball foul. Remember, well, I don't know if you ever wore them. I know where you're going. When the uniforms were wool? Yes. I wore those in uh, rookie ball yeah. in 1976. We actually had the, the wool jerseys of the 1960 Yankees. Oh. <laughs> Delman hammers this to left. That's going to bounce off the wall. Rajay Davis plays it well. It's going to be close at second, but it's offline. Nistoris dove back to make the tag on Doman, and he slides in safely. Davis made a strong throw, but it was to the outfield side of second base. Just a couple of more feet on the bag where that second baseman can just catch it and throw it down there. He would have been out. Four run game. He's going to try and take the extra base. You can see the ball tails just a little bit. And it is close at second. Good job by Asturias to keep that tag on there just in case that runner slides past second base. You see the hand up and then down and keep that glove right there just in case he slides past the back. Well, what a great job by our cameraman and tape room. That was a beautiful shot and showed the action in very slow motion. One out, Doman at second with his 16th double of the season. Justin Morneau looking for his first hit in this series. And the Blue Jays, the Blue Jays have pitched him tough. Yep. It looks like they've thrown him breaking balls when he was looking for fastballs and fastballs when he's looking for something off speed. For that breaking ball. Okay, I got to return to the uniforms for a oh, second. Yeah. Yeah. Whose uniform did you wear? Because the names were embroidered name. inside the jersey. You're, you're absolutely right, and I can't remember. I'd have to sit here and, and, and think, but it was those wool jerseys, and they were some kind of hot. Uh, you would play a day game. This is 1976 now. Wow. I think you'd lose about 20 pounds. Bouncing ball just foul. But yeah, it's uh, we wore those in the big leagues, of course. And on a day like today, playing outdoors, a player might switch uniforms three times just because that wool would get so wet and so heavy. heavy. And then the undershirts, they were like iron. They had wool sleeves all the way up to the shoulder, and you could barely 
pull them up because they would shrink. What they 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 weren't the dry fit. Uh, oh <laughs> man, work now. Good idea right there. Just missed with that outside pitch. How many pounds would you lose on a day like today? Uh, 12, 15 pounds catcher. Really? Kansas oh. City in that artificial surface, it's 140 degrees you coming off that turf. You couldn't drink enough water on days like today. Uh, he hits more now, and he will go to first base. He has been on base twice with a walk, and now he's been hit by a pitch. So far, runners at first and second, one out. Bouncing ball off the turf, Luke. Not in time at first, and he didn't have much of a chance. An infield hit for Plouffe. DeRosa was coming over from third. I don't know that DeRosa would have had any better chance of making that play. It would have been a, an easier chance for the third baseman because his momentum was going towards first base. Luke comes off the mound, catches it on the run. Now he's got to stop, plant, and throw a strike. And by that time, Plouffe has passed the bag. Don't know if he would have been out or safe. Dero, you can see he's playing deep. Maybe he gets him. Probably not. Yeah, DeRose is going to have to deal with one more hop as well. It's going to hit the turf before he would have played it. No telling where it goes on that extra bounce. So Pete Walker with a quick visit to the mound is to help Luke catch his breath. The bases are loaded. Domet with a doubles at third. Morneau was hit by a pitch and proof an infield single. And Luke gets ahead of the right fielder, Chris Plumlee. That's what he can do. He can cross fire that fastball to the lefties and hit that outside corner. He's also not afraid to throw it into him. Fastballs both sides of the plate from Luke. is behind 0 and 2. He struck out twice already this afternoon. Has just one hit in 11 at bats with the bases loaded. Bouncing oh, ball to Encarnacion. He'll go to second for one. Back to the first. Went to second. They got the runner at second, and the return throw was a strong one from Reyes. And Carnacion thought they had turned two. I think everybody in the ballpark thought that they had turned two. Reyes can't believe it. Let's take a look at it. Edwin attacks this ball and makes a good throw right over the shoulder of the runner. And then the return throw, good stretch. This will be the definitive look right here. Out. So Parmley picks up the RBI on the fielder's choice and puts the replay. Because though the Jays have turned two runners at the corners, two outs. That is the reaction that you got when the fans saw that. He's got the ball in the glove. He's got the foot. Look at the stretch from Encarnacion and still hasn't touched the bag. Luke misses inside to Pete Thomas. It's a ball in the strike. Yeah. Edwin Encarnacion is never very animated. He came off the bag and his reaction would indicate he thought that 
they had completed the double play. You know, first basemen know because they can feel when that runner hits the bat when you're on it. And they know if they've got the ball in the glove beforehand. Tough play. It's a tough play for an umpire. A bang bang play. Defensive swing from Cleet Thomas. He fouls it up. Blue Jays lead it 6 3 now. Aaron Luke into the ballgame in relief of Todd Redman, who went five strong in Broken back dribbler, Barosa in front of Reyes. And it gets the call this time, a high stretch. The inning is over, but the Twins get one back. The Blue Jays have a 6 3 lead. It's bang, bang again at first. Barosa's throw is high. Incarnacion stays on the bag. It looked like Blue Jays might have got a call. Donor, some lucky fans enjoying the seat upgrade courtesy of TD. And over in the Jays Care Community Clubhouse are folks from Camp Uchigayas. Welcome to Rogers Center. Hope you're having a great day, and it's a full house here at Rogers Center. Jays Care Community Clubhouse is always packed with great fans and great guests, and we want to welcome you to the ballpark. Jose Reyes will start things off for the Jays and they're half of the sixth. Reyes homered his last time up as a right handed hitter. We talked to Reyes about his maturing as a hitter and he named two players that really had a positive impact on him. He bounces this ball to second. He is the time. The one player. Played here with Blue Jays a long time. Carlos Delgado, they were teammates with the Mets, and another Met teammate was Carlos Beltran, who also is a switch hitter like Reyes. He said those two guys have helped me a lot. And also, when Delgado sees something in a game that Reyes is playing, he'll call him up. He said, We're still very close, and he calls me all the time if he notices something I'm doing at the plate that's causing problems. Well, he probably hasn't talked to him for a couple of weeks because Reyes has been. Swing in the bat. Jose Bautista has doubled in three at bats. Reyes, we can see his athleticism every day he steps on the field. You know, if he just didn't enjoy the game of baseball so much, you know? Well, he said that's what motivated him to push himself hard through the rehab process coming back from that sprained ankle. His desire to be back with his teammates and play again. 
he's had plenty of experience coming back from injuries. He's had yes. more than his share of injuries throughout his career. But he's healthy now, and when he's healthy, he can do a lot of things to help you win. That has been on display in this homestand. I mean, we, we've seen his glove, his arm, his power, and his speed. I mean, everything that you want from a ball player. Sorzak comes back with two strikes after falling behind 3 and 0 to Bautista. Ball four, and he'll go to first. That comes with one. The 2013 Honda Civic, Canada's best-selling car 15 years in a row. Honda, the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Sunday afternoon, J.P. Aaron, CB of Bobblehead Day here at Rogers Center. What is it like when you're, like, when you travel? Like Bautista at first for Edwin Encarnacion. Brian Dillman's going to jog out to the mound and have a chat with Anthony Swarzak. Swarzak into the ball game in relief of Scott Diamond. Twins also carry eight relievers on their roster. Five righties and three lefties. That's a sign that the starters haven't been able to go that deep for the Twins. There's the, the bullpen. But they've done a nice job. They've got some, some good arms down there. Josh Renicky recognized that name as he is a former Blue Jay in Colorado. Did a pretty good job in Colorado for him. The Twins starters are only averaging a little over five innings per start, which is 15th last in the American League. So they need a deep bullpen. Kevin Correa opened up the series on Friday night. He went six innings, but was tagged for four runs on ten hits. Mike Pelfrey battled through some control problems in the first inning and gave them six innings. But he had to throw 32 pitches in the first, and he left early. Swarzak falls behind again. Delivers his strike. It's now three and one. Encarnacion has walked twice already this afternoon. That's three walks for Edwin. He'll go to first back-to-back -back walks for the Jays with one out here in the sixth. Well, you're right about the Twins. They've always been a club that throws a lot of strikes. And with that, they will give up their share of home runs. But Rick Anderson, the pitching coach, is out. You talk to sports like Twins have walked five now this afternoon. That's a reminder. Primetime Sports is number one for a reason. The best content you'll find on our radio. Primetime Sports with Bob McCowan every weekday on Sportsnet 590, The Fan. Bob McCowan does a great job, and you can hear him every weekday from 4 to 7. Sportsnet 590, The Fan, and Bob McCowan and his co hosts will always open up a can of worms and have a chat <laughs> about any kind of sport. Certainly with the NHL free agency and high gear, he'll have a lot of that to talk about tomorrow. Adam Lynn facing Anthony Swarzak. And Bautista took off. Bautista broke for third, and he's going to stay in the rundown to enable him. Then Tomasione to move to second, but Bautista had took off. He taken off for third as he thought Swarzak was going to throw home. And one last look, and Swarzak gets him in a rundown. 
trying to time it up. And the Twins defend it perfectly. Step off, get in front of that runner, run him back to the base that you came from, and then record the out. Bautista a little bit too anxious right there, trying to time it up on Schwartzak. Lynn with Encarnacion at second takes a strike. Schwarzak had to be thrilled when he turned around and saw Bautista halfway between second and third. He had walked Bautista and Encarnacion, and he was in a big time jam. Yeah, against the guy who's hit the ball hard twice this afternoon. It chases one up and away. We had a chat with Lynn this afternoon earlier before the ball game about his swing recently. Says he's been swinging at too many balls outside of the strike zone. When he was doing well, he was really concentrating on getting that ball where he likes it and much more patient. He's telling me today I'm striking out too much because I'm swinging at too many pitches out of the strike zone. It's a simple formula. And there's the man that's responsible for all of these hitters, Chad Matola, the hitting coach, in his first season. He's the hitting coach in the big leagues, and you got to keep everybody confident, keep their minds clear, try to encourage them all that things are going to turn around. This is off the end of the bat. It's slicing away from Pete Thomas, and will get in the seats. Lou Pinella, when he went from a player to a hitting coach, used to talk about it. I used to worry about one swing. Now I got to worry about 12. <laughs> yeah. And 12 minds also. Yeah. I mean, you got to say the right thing that clicks in each one of those guys' mind. So you, you have to know what makes Adam Lynn click, the right phrase. You might say that to him and say it to somebody else and get no response. Into center field and deep, and that's going to get down and go all the way to the wall. And Carnacion is headed across the plate. Adam Lynn gets his first hit of the afternoon, and RBI double. Again, it's a simple formula: you get a pitch to hit. Don't swing your pitches out of the strike zone. That'll help out the pitcher. Good things are going to happen. Lynn has lined into a double play, hit a seed to center field, but not this time. That's a short stroke. And it is a good pitch to hit. And he'll split the outfielder for another RBI double. And send scores it from the game. Look, he's hitting right there by Adam Lynn. So Lynn knocks Swarzak out of the game with a two out RBI double the right hander. Josh Renicky jogs in from the bullpen. Josh Renicki, we mentioned Renicki was a Blue Jay, came to 
the Jays in the Scott Rowland deal, along with Edwin Encarnacion and Ian Stewart. And he's got a big league arm. Paul has had a great fastball right over the top of that. Mid to high 90s fastball with natural late movement. He'll cut it at times. A little bit of slider and a change up. A little bit of inconsistency. That's why that whip, you see it at 1.39. Inconsistencies with the strike zone. He needs a little bit better command. Because there's an answer. It was Oxter who came from Cincinnati in that trade. The Jays have since traded him. Trade took place July 31st, 2009. Scott Roman going to Cincinnati. And he starts DeRosa off with a breaking ball into there. Mark DeRosa's had a two hit day. Renneke pitched a total of 29 games for the Blue Jays, split between the 2009-2010 season. Joe Bauer makes a nice play, take a hit away from DeRosa, and Renneke gets out of the inning, comes in and retires the only batter. But the Blue Jays add a run. It's 7-3. Jays. Final vote. There are five American leaguers on the final votes for their league, and one of these players will go to the All Star game as the 34th player. Steve Delabar would represent Blue Jays and become the fourth All Star for the Blue Jays, and you can bet there's going to be a lot of competition. Detroit, New York, Texas, and Boston are all going to support their players. So make sure you log on and let's show the strength of the Blue Jays fans from coast to coast. They cast your vote for Steve Delabar. You have until Thursday afternoon at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. You can vote as often as you like, as many times as you like. And let's make Steve Delabar the fourth Blue Jays All Star. Third pitcher of the afternoon for the Blue Jays, Justin. Justin McGowan did. He finished off Friday night shutout against the Minnesota Twins with a perfect ninth inning. Pop out, fly out, and a ground out. John Gibbons has said that he has been impressed with Dustin McGowan and he said he's going to pitch him in more high leverage situations and I think this is one of them right here seventh inning four run lead Aaron Hicks the center field in a home run off of Todd Redmond the starter the only hit that Redmond allowed in his five innings. McGowan on Wednesday against the Tigers in an inning of relief struck out Torrey Hunter, Miguel Cabrera, and Prince Field. And Hicks strikes out. He went around and couldn't check his swing on that McGowan slider. That's the one thing that they have. They got some power coming out of that bullpen now. Strike one, strike two, and now here comes the slide piece. All right there. Hicks can't hold up goes around. Clearly goes around. 
for the first out. McGowan, that three batter of Tiger. That ball skipped right over the glove of Edwin Encarnacion off the bat of Pedro Florimore. He's going to end up at second. Encarnacion had a good beat on the ball. It just hit the dirt, took off, went right over his glove. Looked like a ground ball to his glove side. You never know on this field, it could hit a seam. It could hit a dirt spot where the dirt and the turf come together. Take a crazy hop on him. It looks like he's going to be charged with an error. It is an error on Encarnacion, his fourth error at first base. He's committed two errors over at third when he went over there for a short time. But Florimon is at second. Top of the order. Brian Dozier. Those Tiger at bats that you were talking about with Dustin McGowan, that was impressive. I mean, it was hot night through butter. That's how easy he went through that middle of the batting order for the Detroit Tigers, using a combination of his fastball and his slider. It was no contest. I mean, Hunter Cabrera and Prince Fielder, I mean, they were all overmatched. This is McGowan on Wednesday. Go back and look at Prince Fielder's reaction after this swing and miss. Movement. Look at him saying, like, Where'd you come from? <laughs> okay. That's the kind of stuff that you have right there. That's impressive. Well, I tell you what, that's a great reaction, and we, we saw Miguel Cabrera took his cap yeah. to R.A. Dickey after striking out on a good monkey ball. Yeah. That was basically the same thing. Yep. He's sinking the ball a little bit more this year. And he's got a little bit of a slider and that great fastball. And it's a great story. Been out of the big leagues for a while. He's fought his way back. Worked his way back. There is nothing lonelier than being on your own rehab. Another wicked breaking ball. Those are strikes out for. The second time this afternoon. Slider. Once again, get on top of it. It's in a good spot. And it comes up empty. Dustin's wife, Jilly, told us when she was in the booth talking about the Jay's care, Lady Jay's food drive, that obviously they have been through a lot together and I'm sure Dustin would tell you that Jilly was there to support him through that long process. <laughs> Joe Mauer had a single in yesterday's game. He's got a eight game road hit streak at stake. He is 0 for 3 so far. It's a nine game streak that he has playing away from target field. But he's over so far. He's got a strikeout, a fly out, and a ground down. Dustin McGowan in relief of Aaron Loop. Brett Cecil, the all star, is loosening up. Two balls and a strike, two outs. Bauer hits it hard but foul. Bauer's quick inside. He's just a good hitter. He's quick inside that fastball, mid 90s. 
and he's able to turn on it. If you've got good command of a backdoor breaking ball, now might be the time to use it. Or throw that same sinker he threw to Prince Fielder. Yeah. <laughs> Either one. Choose whichever one you want to go with. Looks like JP was thinking away. Slider hit on the ground is Storis at second. Justin McGowan has another good inning of relief. A couple of strikeouts in his inning of work. The CRV and IIHF top safety pick. Honda is the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Blue Jays have hit a couple of home runs, three of them. This is the big one right here. Our driver of the game, Rajay Davis, with his second home run of the season. Three run. No doubter to left field, really blowing open this game here this afternoon's drive of the game. Blue Jays were in desperate need of a big hit, and Rajay Davis delivered. Came with two outs in the fifth and blew the game wide open. Blue Jays have a four run lead as they are set to knock off the seventh. It'll be Davis, Rasmus, and Aaron Sebia. Josh Renicky came into the ballgame to get the final out of the sixth inning. Davis has a hustle double and a three run home run. He hit a two out double in the fourth. It was basically a line drive to center field. And center fielder Aaron Hicks had to go to his right, and Davis hustled into second. Yeah. Not about the center fielder. He was just doing what he had to do to go over and cut that ball off. He could just run Rajay Davis, and he just ran that right into a double. Other players? Probably would have been a single. Ajay Davis has worked hard to snap that prolonged slump he had working. He was 0 for 17 and got a base hit in yesterday's game in the fourth inning. And out swinging today. Playing a lot more now that Melky Cabrera is on the disabled list. And we spoke with Melky and thinks that he will be back right after the All Star break. He's been running, and taking some batting practice down on the field. Yeah, he's hit fairly consistently as far as taking batting practice. The running has amped up. Lately, 
coming back from tendonitis in his knees. So he'll have to at some point go down on a rehab. He told me that he is due to come off the disabled list next Saturday, July 13th. So he'll probably go down over the All-Star break and get some games. Playing the minor leagues. Somewhere. Yeah, they, you're, you're out for two weeks. You need to get some at bats. And what a perfect time to go. All-Star break. Not to miss anything. Get a chance to get your stroke back. Full count to Davis. Rajay is leading off the bottom of the center. Rajay's had just one three hit game this season. Came in Chicago against the White Sox. He was three for five in that game at three singles. And here he'll take the walk. Davis aboard with nobody out. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Price has come off the DL for a break. At seven innings, his first time out against Houston. It's six innings, seven is a single run. He hasn't walked a batter in either of his first two starts. That might be a team that might make some noise in the second half. They get that pitching squared away. Get Alex Cobb back. They can hit. Yeah, they're a much better hitting club than yes. they've had in the last several years. Yep. Davis with a big lead. He's going to draw another throw from Josh Reddick. Rushing 21 steals on the season. Joe Maurer threw him out yesterday in the fourth inning. That's part of the strategy. That's a set play. The pitcher will just hold the ball, trying to ice the runner at first, and just have him tense up, and then he'll step off. Get a little shaky leg over there at first base, and then step off and look at him. There's a number of signs that can come from the bench to the catcher to control that running game. There goes Davis, pitches down and away. The throw from Dunn. Off line and loop. Doesn't matter. You throw over a couple of times. You, you step off. You can even pitch out. You're not going to get him. He's just too fast. One foot on the carpet. Straight steal. And a dive in the second base. 22nd stolen base of the season for Davis. And boy, does he gather momentum as that he extends through the bag with that head first slide. Bobby Erasmus has had a perfect day. A single, a two run, a home run, and a walk.
Now it's time for Smooth Move of the Game, brought to you by Bacardi Oakland. Smooth Spiced Rum. Bacardi is a proud partner of the Toronto Blue Jays. J.P. Aaron Sebia is going to get this afternoon for a smooth move because of this. His friend Jessica being able to throw out the first pitch. J.P. setting that whole thing up in spring training. What a smooth move by the Blue Jay backstop. It's awesome, and Jessica Dunn had a chance to throw out the first pitch, and her pal J.P. Aaron Seavey was the catcher on J.P. Aaron Seavey at Bobblehead Day. Jessica is a cancer survivor, and Aaron Seavey met her last September at Sick Kids Hospital. And he has stayed in touch, and he constantly communicates with Jessica to encourage her to help her continue her Battle. And she has had some special day at the ballpark. Good for you, Jesse. JP single to center field his last time up. Now really give him a thrill. <laughs> That's great. What a great way to enjoy the ball game. After everything she's been through, she has a beautiful smile. She's encouraging JP to do something else here. JP has walked in single. He is one for two this afternoon. Don't you know? Don't you feel he just wants to hit a home run? <laughs> you know he does. Uh, yeah, I mean he he just missed his first time. He almost yeah. hit one out the right field, and then he almost hit one out. His second time up down the left field line. Maybe it'll give him a green light here. 3 0, Rasmus at second. And you see if he takes his strike. He's probably never been more pleased to take a strike. <laughs> uh, straight back. Over the screen. Josh Renicky walked the leadoff man in this inning, Rajay Davis, and then Kobe Rasmus knocked Davis in with a double. That was foul, breaking ball. Rasmus has had a big day, three hit day, driven in three. It is 16th home run in the fourth inning off of Scott Diamond. That double was a thing of beauty. I mean, he really stayed on that ball, down it away, and hit it hard to left center field for another RBI. Tags and moves to third. Aaron CB hit the ball hard to center. But he is out on the fly ball. So Meiser Asturis was set to bat, and Mark Gardner has come out and made a pitching change. Be the left handed Ryan Dunsing. In relief of Josh Renicky, he'll face the switch hitting Pfizer and Sturis when we come back.
13th. It all begins at 6.05 p.m. The Buffalo Bisons take on the Scranton Woods Ferry Rail Riders. First 3,000 fans will receive a Blue Jays cap. Appearances by Blue Jays alumni Dwayne Ward, Candy Maldonado, and the Ace. The teams will play a doubleheader, two seven inning games, so you get two games for the price of one. BuffaloBisons.com for tickets. Log on and big part in Blue Jays night in Buffalo. Brian Densing, his first appearance in this series, and Twins have tomorrow off. So you can bet Ron Gardner I didn't want Dunsing to go the entire series without pitching. So he's in to face Meister Asturis, and Asturis jumps on the first pitch and drills it to center. Boy, Meister has been very aggressive on the first pitches, and he delivers Colby Rasmus in from third. When he has runners in scoring position, you got the infield in. Why wait around? That's the best pitch you're going to get. He doesn't wait around. Singles to center field. Last time up, he flew out with a couple of runners on. This time, he's going to cash. Colby Rasmus with this single in center field. He had a pretty good pitch. Blue Jays have added two runs here in the bottom of the center. Good day for the hitters. Nine runs on 12 hits. They hit three home runs. Doing all the damage in the middle innings. This was a zip zip score. Headed again to the bottom of the fourth. The hitters have taken over. Oh, two to Reyes. He stays alive, and this is the part of Reyes's game that he is really focused on. Batting with two strikes, not striking out as frequently as he did early in his career, and becoming a tough out. He had 82 strikeouts as a career high in 2008. 2009, he was injured, but then he came back in 2010 and kept that to 63. Two thousand and eleven when they won the batting time with forty one strikeouts. Some people are going to strike out. That's just the makeup and the way they swing. But for a leadoff hitter with speed, you can't. I think he recognized that and said, take my game to the next level. I can't strike out. Jim and two. That's that on base percentage went up too when he stopped striking out. So yeah, that year in 2011 it was 384, where some of the other years where he hit 300, 350. Uh, he made a dramatic improvement in his game. Two and two to Reyes. Another tough pitch, and you know he really gives you an idea what it means to protect the plate. Borderline pitches, you've got to reach out, extend, and foul them off. No, he doesn't give away at bats either. Nine to three, he's out there grinding. Breaking ball hit too short. Borderline throws her back to first. Time to get Reyes. Reyes is aboard. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Manny Machado is surely one of the best young players to come into the game for a long time. He can do it in the field. And he can do it at the plate. And there he keeps it a one nothing game. Yeah, everybody the last couple of years have talked about Bryce Harper and Mike Trout. And of course you should. I mean they're great players. Man, Machado is right there. He has to be mentioned with those guys. As one of the top players. 
as Andy Batista takes a breaking ball that just missed. Bautista had a ringing double his first time up. Hit a line drive that went down in the left field corner. Two balls and a strike, Jose Reyes at first. There are two outs. The Jays have scored twice more here in the second. Edwin Encarnacion has walked three times this afternoon and scored twice. Bautista draws another walk. He's walked twice this afternoon, and that'll bring Edwin to the plate with two on and two outs. Full house here. Great crowd on hand. 43,795 in attendance. This is the final game of the homestand. The Jays had 37,000 here yesterday. On Junior J Saturday today, fueled by JP Aaron Sebius Bobblehead, 43,795. And Kyle drills this, and it's going to go to the wall. Reyes is around third. He's going to score. Bautista's being waved home, and they drop the relay throw. Now they'll go to third, and Kyle is safe. Walking guys, pretty soon someone's going to make him pay. Encarnacion with a couple of runners on after a couple of walks. Doesn't waste any time from Dunsing. Down and away, slices it into right field. Two runs are going to score. And watch him when he comes around second. He's thinking, okay, that's, that's it. Now, what? We're going to send Bautista? All right, I better keep running then. And he makes it all the way to third base. His first triple of the season, and Bautista scores, and now Edwin's coming out of the game. Good day for Encarnacion. Three walks, a two-run triple. And he will enjoy the rest of this game on the bench. Winonori Kawasaki has taken over. He will probably go to second, and we'll see a lot of changes on the Blue Jays' infield next inning. Lynn doubled his last time up. Blue Jays now with 11 runs on 13 hits. This is the kind of game you like to have before an offense. Yep. It makes that rest a little sweeter. Blue Jays will go to Cleveland after their annual golf outing on Monday. Pulled on the ground. Howard scoops it and shovels the Dunsing, and the inning is over. But the Blue Jays have another four run inning. They've scored in each of their last four innings. Garnashion with a two run triple. Went Cecil into the ballgame.
58 then he made his 39 appearances and all those numbers are a good indication of why he's an all-star every one of them three and oh for brett cecil 143 earn run averages in the top 10 in all the big reliever categories opponents batting average against whips strikeouts and you can see why he's going to the all-star game a couple of defensive changes for the blue jays my sister started at second he moves to third kawasaki pinch running for Encarnacion's at second and mark de rosa who started at third takes over for Encarnacion at first base emilio bonifacio is into the ball game in bautista's spot and Rajay davis goes from left to right bautista's out of the game along with edwin Encarnacion. They deserve it. With a high pop foul down the left side. Now it's drifting back toward the seats. And Bonifacio couldn't make a play. And fans were battling with Bonifacio for that pop up there. Looked like it was just a row into the seats. He might have had a shot. We saw that yesterday with Bautista in right field. Bonifacio is right there, and he's going to make the catch. Guys, back off a little bit. If you want a baseball, we'll get you one. This is an out right there. The fans fighting the home team for a baseball. Now, look at all the gloves. Huh? <laughs> Steve Bartman would be proud. Well, everybody's got a glove down there. Delman strikes out. See so. It's the first down of the top of the end. Sixth in strikeouts for relievers in the American League. This is number 51 right here. High fastball. Nova can't catch up to it. Brett Cecil. He's going to the All-Star game, and certainly his fortunes have turned around. You see the pinch hitter is Eduardo Escobar batting for Justin Morneau. But Cecil's velocity is the biggest story. I mean, we have seen him as high as 95 this year. The last couple of seasons, he was in the 80s, the high 80s. He didn't have that 95-mile-an-hour velocity. But he will go to the All-Star game as living proof of Jamie Evans' velocity program. And Steve Delabar is the one that introduced Cecil to that program, obviously. It got Steve Delabar back to the big leagues. And now Dustin McGowan is using it. And you can bet it's going to be a topic of conversation for Cecil throughout his media scrums at the All-Star game. And there, of course, all the riders in the country and around the world converge on the All-Star game, and he's going to be a hot topic. Yeah, that's going to be great advertisement for that. You know, Blue Jays have hired him also to help out through the minor league system with some of the younger players. It works, and Brett Cecil's proof of that went in last fall and started on the program, came to spring training, and then really turned it up a notch. Same thing with Dustin McGowan. I'm anxious to see some of these young players get on that program and what it does for them. Steve Delamar initially was introduced to the program after he broke his elbow and he was out of baseball. And he was playing slow pitch softball and working as a substitute teacher and teaching young kids how to pitch. Escobar takes ball four. He'll go to first. Steve Delabar is in the final vote. Five players from each league will be involved in the final vote for the 34th spot on the roster, and all the players in support of Delabar wore the Raise the Bar Vote Delabar t shirts, and every team that has a player in the final vote are going to promote their player. And obviously, we'd love for the Blue Jay fans to get online and Vote for Steve Delabar. And it's not just the players. So the media is getting into it, too. And a bunch of ex-players getting into it. We have our shirts here. We're going to be wearing them around town. I'm going to put mine on tonight, I think. So it's important that you log on and get him.
to the All Star game. That'd be a great feather in the cap of the Blue Jays to have four players represented. With the All Star team representing the Blue Jays. That'd be awesome. Edwin Encarnacion is going to make his first trip to the midseason classic, and he deserves to go there. And he had some interesting thoughts about the impact of his season a year ago. I think that's where it started. Uh, for you to become an All Star, I think you have to establish yourself and have that one year where everybody takes notice and say, "Hey, this guy's pretty good." Encarnacion, I think, did that last year with the monster year that he had last year. Proving that's not a fluke, he's doing it again this year, and I think that really helped him establish himself and get himself into the All Star game. You got to prove it once and then do it again, and he'll take notice. There's a deep drive to left field. Trevor Kluf has just hit a two run a home run off Brett Cecil. Just the second home run Cecil has allowed all season. They have contained Booth the whole series. That's his second hit. He had an infield single his last time up. Like he tried to backdoor cutter, but it just got too much of the plate and it was up. Booth homers to left field. It's ahead of Parmley with a high strike. Two home run hitters, Aaron Hicks and Trevor Poof. Number nine for Poof. Eleven to five, Blue Jays. It comes right back and it strikes out probably. That's how you answer giving up a home run, three pitches, and a strikeout. Wasn't happy with that home run, but he'll be happy with this one. Spins a curveball up there, good spot. McGowan had two strikeouts in his inning of work, and Cecil has a pair here in the end. Tom is starting in left field today. Osvaldo Arcia, the rookie left fielder, was hit by a pitch yesterday in the sixth inning and he was taken out of the game. Arcia is there on the bench, but maybe he's still feeling the effects of being hit by that pitch. Cecil ahead 0 and 2. Donald stays alive. The All Star game certainly a great thrill for any player, but must be special for a player to go for the first time. They got a couple of them, the Blue Jays. Go there and you, you try and do everything. I mean, you, you could be busy for four straight days if you want to. And as a player, I think you should try to enjoy it and try and get in as much as you can. See, so I thought that was strike three. It almost headed toward the dugout. You were an all-star, and talk about how that gave you even more confidence than you already had. Well, you feel like you finally arrived as a player. You go, wow. I First of all, I didn't think I belonged on the same field as some of those great players, but it, I think it just verified that you're you're a good player, that your peers think something of you, that they can coach you in there and get you in there. It is a great feeling. Umpire Paul Emmel, you can hear him very clearly. Don't yell at me, Johnny. <laughs> There's only one Johnny in the dugout. <laughs>
Zesa loses Thomas after getting ahead of him 0-2. Two. two walks in the inning, a couple of strikeouts. Rogers customers can watch every Blue Jays game this season on Sportsnet Live on your smartphone. Visit RogersAnyPlaceTV.com slash sports to get started. Red Cesar so is going to be taken out of the game here mid-inning. Hasn't happened very often to him this year. So Neil Wagner will come in and he'll work with two outs and a man at first. Giving up a home run in the ninth, but Adam Jones, the All Star, connects for his 16th home run to give the Orioles a little confidence against Mariano Rivera. Neil Wagner into the ball game in relief of Brett Cecil. Cecil walked two in the inning, had two strikeouts, and gave up a two-run home run. Aaron Hicks is a switch hitter batting left handed against the right hander. Wagner. Some more heat for you, too. Dustin McGowan came in last inning. First batter he faced was Hicks and struck him out. And you're going to get more of the same right here. More heat. Mid to upper 90s fastball and a split that Wagner features. Ball and a strike, two outs. Blue Jays lead it 11 to 5. Twins have had just four hits. Aaron Hicks had a two run home run in the fifth. That was the first hit allowed by Todd Redmond, the only hit he would give up in his five innings this afternoon. And Todd Redmond is in line for his first big league win. Four of those runs coming. After a walk and then a home run. A couple of hits and four. Four runs on the board. Hicks fouls it just outside of third. He had to reach for that pitch away at 97 miles an hour. Pretty good heater that Hicks got a piece of.
gets up to that one. Another 97 mile an hour fastball and Hicks strikes out. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth. It's a 11 5 Blue Jays. Now time for a Blue Jays Central update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the Blackberry Broadcast Studio. Friday, July 19th, the Blue Jays will take on the Tampa Bay Rays. Game time is 7.07 .07 p.m. Come on down to Rogers Center early and check out the three game festivals outside gate 10. You can win great prizes, enjoy the live music, there's a licensed area, and more. The gates open at 4.30 p.m., so make sure you call the Blue Jays at 416-341-1234. Log on to BlueJays.com to order your Jays tickets. You can always stop by most Rogers Plus locations. And pick up your tickets for summer fan Friday festivals. AC Fine now in the ball game for the Minnesota Twins. It becomes their fourth reliever. What a month of June he had. I think Panthers are just two for their last 31 against him. He pounds the strike zone with that two seam fastball. You can see that just seven walks this season to go along with 37 strikeouts. He'll also throw a four seam mix in a change up. Very competitive, but he'll just challenge it. Throw it around that strike zone. Mark DeRosa has had a two hit game. Goes after the first pitch and fouls it into the seats. Bottom of the eighth inning and the Blue Jays after a slow start really broke out the bats. The scoreless game into the bottom of the fourth. Scott Diamond then really ran into trouble and the big blow was Rajay Davis's three run a whole run in the fifth. Bobby Rasmus got it started with a two run shot in the fourth. That got the Jays on the board. Twins came right back with two of their own in the top half of the fifth, and then the Blue Jays took control. That's what I like what the Blue Jays have done. They just kept pouring it on. DeRosa hits it to short. One down. Now the Blue Jays, we mentioned, they're going to have an off day on Monday, and then they will go into Cleveland and take on the Indians, and the Indians are. Having a pretty good season. Unfortunately, they ran into the Tigers and had a little rough patch. Then they'll go to Baltimore. Blue Jays will take on the Orioles to wrap up before the All Star break. And then after the break, it'll be Tampa Bay here at Rogers Center Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Then the Dodgers right behind Tampa Bay. You get a chance to see Yasiel Puig and that Dodger team. Clayton Kershaw, Zach Greinke. Carl Crawford might be back by then. Sounds like he's very close to coming back. Isn't it funny how things work out? Matt Kemp injured his shoulder and 
Not sure about his status, so when Crawford gets back, they won't have to juggle as many outfielders. Casey Fee, look at him. He comes right in and pumps fastballs in there. He's got a great strikeout to walk ratio. Uses his fastball that time, a little bit of a slide piece to finish off the batter. Hit a hot hitter. Fee strikes out Davis. Fee is from California. He went to San Luis Obispo, Cal Poly, and was originally drafted by the Tigers in the 20th round, 2006. He made his big league debut in 2009 in relief against the White Sox. Casey Jansen has been throwing. He'd probably get yeah. an inning of work. He hasn't pitched a lot lately. And you mentioned the off day tomorrow, so hopefully it'll be a quick inning for him. Colby Erasmus has had a big day. Been on base four times. He singled in the second, homered in the fourth, walked in the fifth, and had an RBI double in the seventh. The prettiest swing was probably that double to left center field. And he stayed on an outside pitch and stayed over the top of it, hit it on a line the other way. Jays lost three or four to the Tigers on this homestand. They win this one this afternoon. They'll take two or three from Minnesota. Makes up three and four in the stand. Rasmus with a 2 2 count. They see Casey Fien. Oh, he hits it hard. He's been hitting the ball hard all afternoon. He hit one foul up into the fifth deck down the right field line earlier. He has really pulled that inside pitch. Pitchers try to come inside to Rasmus. And he's got something for you in there. Get off of me. Yanks that one foul. Rasmus has been a real problem for Ryan Doman to catch her all afternoon. He hasn't been able to solve Rasmus at all. Sit back there and watch him hit all those good pitches and takes one downstairs and it's a full count. You get back behind that plate and you're trying to figure out where to go next against Rasmus and Doman's had nothing work for him. Everything they've thrown down, it's been don't go there. To pop up this time a mile high. Third baseman Trevor Poof comes in to make the catch. They finally get Rasmus up. The Blue Jays go down in order in the eighth. Casey Chance. Who
Charlottetown PEI, August 8th, 9th, and 10th at Victoria Park. That's the site. The instructors include Hall of Famer Roberto Alabash. Homer Bush, Jesse Barfield, Juan Benitez, and Dwayne Ward. Visit BlueJays.com slash Baseball Academy for more information. The Blue Jays on the Super Games in PEI. Casey Jansen in to work tonight. As we mentioned, he hasn't pitched an awful lot. He's only got 29 games all season. He's 17 for 18, and this, of course, is not a save situation. Yeah, but he needs the work. Uh, last work three days ago in the same similar situation where he had to come in and get some, some work, and that didn't work out for him. Oh, yeah. Jose Reyes, a nice backhanded play, and what a good play. Boy, he turned and fired over his shoulder right on the money. And you can't teach that. Nope, that is sheer athleticism right there. The reaction of being a baseball player. Watch him to the left of your screen up there. Gets a good break. Catches and lets go quickly. That's the impressive part. How quickly he caught the ball. How accurately he got it across the diamond for the first down. Brandon Dozier. Once again, get rid of it. Get it across the time and right. For Mark DeRosa at first base just to stretch out and finish off that play. What was impressive is how quickly he got his shoulders turned around and really got on top of the ball and threw it going away from first with a lot on it. Breaking ball that Dozier gets a piece of Dozier walked, stole the base, and moved to third in the first inning. So he was at third with nobody out. Todd Redmond, the starter in this ballgame, did a good job stranding him at third. On the ground, Kawasaki at second. Twins are down to their final out. Joe Maurer, the first baseman this afternoon, has gone 0 for 4 with a strikeout. A little bit of a hidden streak on the line on the road. A nine game road hit streak on the line for Mauer. Blue Jays needed this one. Shut out yesterday. You got an off day, you want to build a little bit more momentum. Heading out on the road right before the All-Star break. Some teams that have been tough on the Jays this year. Cleveland, Cleveland played them tough. We haven't seen them since the opening night series. Way right back in April. The Blue Jays lost two of three in that season opening series to Cleveland. Blue Jays have an edge over the Orioles. They're six and four against Baltimore. Casey Jansen. A 2 2 count. 43,795 on hand. On their feet. Fly ball into center. Rasmus looking up. Ball is over his head. Now it's a ball off the fence in center. One hop double. With two outs to extend his hit streak to nine straight road games. He's just a good hitter. Jansen challenged him. Six run lead in the ninth inning. Two strikes. He's going to challenge him. And you can see how he stays inside that ball nicely. He's, he's a hitting there. 26 doubles now. So that silenced the crowd. A two out double, and now they have to amp it up again. Ryan Domit has a double in four at bats this afternoon. Casey Jansen worked at. Thursday series finale against the Tigers in a similar situation and 
including just one out. And good for John Gibbons realizing that his closer had hit his limit and he got him out. Just a third of an inning and he threw over 20 pitches against the Tigers, was charged with a couple of runs, a couple of walks. Now he walks two and hit a bat. Really uncharacteristic. But here he's ahead of Ryan Dobit. A hit of one and two count on Dobit with two outs. Back on their feet. bit through a lot of pitches in the first inning and walked the batter but then once he got out of that one with the runner at third base nobody out he started pounding that strike zone five innings they turn it over to the bullpen one inning each for loop and McGowan and Jansen and they close it out and they hit three more home runs big day today for the hitters Rasmus and Reyes had big days Thanks for watching. Blue Jays will be back on Tuesday night from Cleveland. Stay tuned. Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn coming right up from the Blackberry Broadcast Studio.